there is a question from Vellore. Uh, so, let me go over to Vellore. I can see you people here. There seems to be a query from your side. Over to you, Vellore. Uh, thank you, Asha. An interesting technical question. First of all, the notion of function overloading, notion of overloading itself is not associated with procedural programming languages. This notion is associated with object oriented programming languages. A lot will depend upon how you are compiling your program. If you are using GCC, GCC might assume that you are actually compiling a C++ program. And there are a lot of overloading which might implicitly happen. The specific case that you mentioned does not appear to me to be the case of function overloading because function overloading or operator overloading has some specific meaning. Uh, to give you a technically correct answer, C programming language and the functions written in C programming language do not have any notion of function overloading. The semantic meaning and implication of a particular way of writing things in scanf and printf function may be so, may be appearing to have function overloading merely because the definition of the semantics of function and as it is called as you are saying must be exactly as that has been prescribed in the standard definition and meaning of the function. So, I hope that answers your question. There is no notion of overloading in C, C functions or C operators are not overloaded. NIT Suratkal seems to have a question. I can see my friends from NIT Suratkal. Over to you, Suratkal. Uh, Nitesh is asking a question whether by any method it is possible to call my main function from somewhere else. Uh, uh, this, uh, the answer to this question is no, by the way. You can always contrive that you have compiled your main program and uh, you have created a standalone executable. The executable file has a certain name. Let us call it prog1.o. Now, it is possible for me to write a shell script in Unix which will invoke this program. It is also possible for my shell script to pass certain parameters to your program through argc and argv if you have written your main program to analyze this. So, technically even main program can be called. However, in the context of your question, can the main program be invoked as a function in the same sense as other functions are invoked? The answer is no. Uh, Rajaram Bapu uh, Institute, uh, uh, there is some question from one of the participants. I can see you. Over to you for your question. Uh, thank you so much. The question asked, I will repeat. The question says, uh, is it possible to write uh, to make nested function calls and is it necessary to write a return statement? If I do not write return, what happens? Uh, nested function calls are no different from ordinary function calls. In fact, we are going to discuss recursion tomorrow and you will find that implicitly a recursive call is nothing but a nested call. Incidentally, I do not agree with you that a, a function need not have return statement. The very objective of a function is to return a value and the return statement should be there. However, when you have nested calls, the returned value do not come to the top invocation, but they go to the intermediate invocation. I will describe this in greater details when we discuss recursion tomorrow, but good question. Thank you. Uh, there are lots of questions on A view now. I will go over to NIT Calicut first followed by NIT Durgapur, then GEC Trishur, Warangal, Bhopal, Kokas and Jalandhar in that order. I am trying to connect to NIT Durgapur now. I can see NIT Durgapur. Uh, over to you Durgapur, please raise your question. Okay. Thank you sir for giving me the opportunity to ask the question. I want to know if there is any way we can calculate the memory required for a function in C program and what is the maximum memory a, memo a function can allocate in, in the program execution. How to calculate the size of 
program in a uh, calculate the size of function in a program hello and what would be the maximum size of a of a function just like we uh, calculate the size of uh, data type like size of operator if there is any way we can calculate the total memory the question is how do i know how much memory is required by a function i believe you are talking about two things here one is the size of the compiled program in that what will be the amount of memory that will get allocated to that function there is no difference between the memory that gets allocated to a program and the memory which gets allocated to a function within a program any time you compile a group of uh, uh, any code together the compiler will allocate memory to whatever components which require memory these will include the translated machine instructions but more importantly these will include also the data structures that you have declared within the function if function is not using any large amount of data such as large arrays or something for its own internal computations then typically the memory required or taken up by a function is very limited limited by the size of the translated code and of course a few parameters and issues such as stack that we mentioned when we call a function from another function there are some intermediate additional memory requirements which are needed to support this invocation business there is a question which someone had asked about the stack size the stacks which get dynamically created and on which things are loaded will all depend upon the number of parameters that are being passed and if the calls are recursive what is the level of nested recursion that is there other than that there is no particular way of finding out how much memory a function uh, occupies the only decent way is please compile a function in a stand alone basis and look at the size of the executable that you get many times even that is not a good indicator because they uh, may, many times you do not create a stand alone executable but you use what we uh, what is the equivalent of dynamically linked libraries so only when you start running a program additional memory may have to be allocated in general then as a thumb rule what we should say is that if i have a function the total memory required for that function will be the sum total of a the size of the translated code which are the machine instructions b if there are any call and calling sequences the amount of memory that is required for the stack and c any data structures which have been declared inside the function so that whenever the function is invoked uh, that data whether it is dynamic or static it does not matter that much memory will have to be allocated so if you have let us say an array declared inside a function uh, which is let us say uh, int array with 10000 elements then 40000 bytes will be will be allocated whether you use them or not it does not matter so to conclude there is no difference between the memory occupied by a function and memory occupied by any other program segment and the best way to find out the exact memory if at all you wish to know is by compiling it in a stand alone fashion and looking at the size of the executable that you get nit jalandhar has a question multiple mapping between integers and their binary representation when computer return the same value uh, i am sorry i did not get this. this is a question from nirma amdabad multiple mapping between integers and their binary representation uh, i do not understand it per perhaps what you mean is different ways of representing integers in the binary representation the only two representations i can think of is assigned and unsigned and i had tried to explain some difference logically here uh, but if you refer to any standard text it will tell you what are the differences there is an interesting question from jalandhar which refers to the pedagogy issues which i was describing how to convince students from other branches than cse 
to keep interest in computer programming while teaching this subject. Wow, this is, uh, this, is uh, this appears to me to be the exact opposite of the problem uh, that I see in some places. Usually in IIT, the students who are most interested in learning programming are not necessarily students from computer science program, but students from other branches. While of course the computer science students score good grades along with the students from electrical engineering, chemical engineering, etc. But if you ask me who were the S programmers of my batch of 800 people, if I were to list, let us say, uh, top 20 students, then at least uh, 12 of them will be non-computer science students. So you seem to have an interesting uh, problem, Jalandar. I will apply my mind. I will have to understand why you think they show less interest in computer programming. The reason why our uh, uh, students seem to be interested in computer programming is because many of them actually want to do IT jobs later. Uh, perhaps through an email, you can let me know why you think they are not interested in programming. There is one question from uh, Periyar University. Yes, let me let me go to Maniamma Periyar. Over to you. Ah, built-in function. Okay. Uh, interesting question. She is asking whether it is possible to convert our function into a built-in function. So let us very quickly understand what is a built-in function and what is our function. Firstly, there is nothing like built-in function. We call a function a built-in function because it comes automatically through a standard library. We think it is built-in because implicitly it gets included in my compiled program, particularly when I have included the standard library. So in C program, whenever I say uh, uh, include stdio.h, a whole lot of functions get included in the compiled form. But if we realize that these functions have been written by someone, they are called standard because they are implicitly made available to all C program. Please remember that if I do not say include stdio.h, then those functions will not be included. In exactly the same fashion, if I want to convert my function or a set of functions into built-in functions, all that I need to do is compile one or more functions separately, put them into a separate library, call that library by some name like uh, mystd.h and ask everybody to include mystd.h automatically all the functions which I have written could become equivalent to built-in functions. So there is final answer, there is nothing like built-in. The built-in actually means that I am using some library functions and just as there are standard C libraries, I could easily write my own libraries and include them uh, for automatic, uh, uh, to give a semblance of a built-in function there. Uh, this is uh, Mrs. Lokre Jadav asking a question from Rajaram Bapu uh, Institute. Uh, unfortunately, the audio is very low. So the question was that while C is a procedural language, procedural programming language, is it possible to create objects in C? Uh, the answer is slightly contrived, but let me try to explain. The notion of objects is associated not only with the notion of classes, methods and the objects as we understand them, but is also associated with object oriented programming. Creating objects can be done in any programming language. Particularly if we consider C programming language and if we understand that C programming language has been used not only to build operating systems but also compilers. As a matter of fact, the C++ compiler itself has been written in C. And therefore, ability to create objects in C is not at all doubted. Yes, of course, you can create objects in C. However, having created those objects in C, will you be able to handle those objects giving object-oriented instructions is a different question altogether. It is completely possible for you to write functions in C which implement classes, functions in C which invoke, which instantiates object, which invokes objects, which make objects 
interact with each other in a proper object oriented way. But the way you will do all this will be very artificial. So, uh, the answer is yes, you can create objects, yes, you can make objects interact with each other in an object oriented fashion, but will you be doing so by giving instructions in an object oriented manner? The answer is no. The instructions that you will be giving will see, still be C program instructions and those instructions will still look like procedural programming instructions. The best, uh, the correct uh, question to ask is, if I want to handle objects, would C be the best thing to do? The answer is no. If I really want to handle objects, better use a programming language with object oriented paradigm. And if you are familiar and comfortable with C, C++ is an ideal language. Otherwise, the more popular programming language is Java, in which you uh, work with classes and objects. Uh, Raisoni has a question. And the question she is asking is that can we write user defined functions which will work similar to scanf and printf? Yes, of course you can. In fact, when we will discuss the files in uh, C, we will notice that uh, just like you have scanf and printf, we can have fprintf which will work with files. And in those functions uh, which do a, a, a file read and file write, it should be possible for me to write some additional functions of my own which will simulate the behavior of scanf and printf and which will work indirectly through a file input output statements which are available in C. If we notice that uh, normal scanf and printf work on the files which we traditionally call std in and std out, there is absolutely no reason why we cannot write the same programs. But I would like to warn you on two things. One, scanf and printf are generic functions. The number of parameters in that function are also variable. It is not easy to write that kind of functions ordinarily. Second, if scanf and printf already exist, why would I ever like to write functions which do exactly the same thing. I would rather write functions which will do something else which the scanf and printf does not do. So, the answer to your question is yes, we can do it, but an additional answer is no, please do not try to do it. Uh, let us go over to, uh, okay. in the chat there are some questions. Mm. Trishur. It seems that the syntax of scanf is found complicated due to the uh, parameter symbol percent and to newcomers. Why is it so complicated? Very good question, Trichur. Uh, somebody from Trichur is asking a question that uh, the uh, syntax of scanf is found complicated because of the presence of symbols like percent and and so. Why it is so complicated? Good question. But this question you and me should ask the people who define scanf, uh, scanf about uh, uh, what 35 years ago. Unfortunately, the syntax of these so called standard built in functions or effectively functions which are part of the standard library, IO library of C were written 35 years ago. Uh, let me explain the mentality of the people, they are great people by the way, Carnegie, Ritchie, Aho, I mean the, at AT&T. Uh, history was being created there. The objective of those people was to create a programming language which could be used to do systems programming. And they were, they, they created C programming language not with an intention to write scientific computational programs or not with an intention to write uh, data management programs. The intention was slightly different. There was a small group, it was never thought that this programming language will be used by millions of people across the world. And therefore, they decided to choose wording, symbolisms, syntax, etc., which they were okay with. So, if you look at it from an expert point of view, who understands pointers, who understands strings, who understands interpretation of incoming strings, who understands the notion of tokens, who understands separation of integer numeric values, etc., from white space delimited fields, etc. For them, this is child's play. 
Unfortunately, what they did for a different purpose, we lesser mortars today are required to teach a first year student from metallurgy or something. You will notice that is the reason I have consistently avoided using ScanF and PrintF. Even the assignment that has been shipped to you yesterday, you will notice that my colleague uh, Nagesh Kalmali has actually written uh, hash defines. So you do not use ScanF and PrintF, but you use simple sounding input output statements. Uh, I assure you that I hate the syntax of ScanF and PrintF as much as you do and the first year students hate it more. My answer to it is never use that. Use C in and C out. Remember I talked about the first month. For the first month use C in and C out. There is absolutely no problem. Later on when you discuss characters, uh, character type or character strings. Once students understand that, it is only then according to me, ScanF and PrintF can be easily understood. Uh, PhD Coim2 has a question, uh, how to protect a function? Is, they, is in C their provision for excess restriction? Uh, I am not so sure. Uh, which format specifier we use for long double data type in C? Uh, there is a C standard, I will pull out the sheet so that uh, I think when I discuss the ScanF and PrintF, uh, the format specifiers of all kinds are described there. So you will get that sheet as a part of the handout. Uh, Nirma Ahmedabad confirms that they have uh, uploaded the things. Uh, Nirma Ahmedabad also has a question, the pedagogy question. Why we do not introduce thinking skills and critical thinking in engineering? Uh, by the way, it is my impression that the entire purpose of the whole engineering education is precisely to introduce thinking skills and critical thinking. If we do not seem to be able to do that perfectly, then the problem is perhaps with us. But let me assure you that independent of the ways in which we teach, including constrained syllabus, etc., etc., the very fact that the kind of work that engineering college students do, including the labs and so on, intrinsically by the way, they are encouraged to think for problem solving and they are encouraged to do critical thinking. But yes, sadly, we do not include these topics as, uh, as formal things to be covered in engineering. But implicitly, this is always done in any engineering education is my opinion. NIT Warangal has a question, is there any universal notation for algorithms? No, sadly there is no universal notation. NIT Jalandhar has a question, is there any mechanism for error handling in C language? Yes, uh, error handling, of course you will have to write programs for it. The intrinsic error handling is <coughs> done by the C compiler. Incidentally, there are two types of error. One is the compiler error itself. And in this respect, the GCC is not a very good compiler. In, in the sense that ordinarily you will get all the information, but sometimes for some uh, very trivial errors, GCC will throw out hundreds of objections. And that is something that we have to learn to live with. This is about errors in the program itself, the compile time error. For runtime error, I am not aware of any mechanism, any special mechanism of error handling except that the reporting is done through the operating system. So, if you want errors to be handled, you will have to write programs yourself or you will have to code the error handling yourself in your C programs. Uh, there, is, there is nothing else that can be done. Uh, from MANIT Bhopal, how many number of parameters can we pass in a function? I do not know of any restriction in the standard, so I guess it is unlimited. Uh, depending upon your capacity to write long lines. Uh, NIT Durgapur, <coughs> whether the everyday assignment should be uploaded by each of the participant or by the team leader? Yes, it is a good question. Uh, when you are talking about uh, 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 programming assignments, I am talking generally about all the six labs. Individual programming assignments should be uploaded by individual participating teacher. but. The specific assignment that you are talking about, which I had given yesterday, 
namely formation of team and team members, only the team leader should upload that assignment. So I repeat, uh, the information about the team and the collective thinking of the team on what alternative programming projects they could think of. Please remove the line which said, which your team will be doing. It is not obligatory for your team to do that. At this stage, I just want your ideas on what could constitute good programming project. So this thinking should be consolidated in a single upload and that upload should be done by the uh, team leader. NIT Varangal has a question, how to make other functions as entry point for a C program apart from main? Uh, I do not think I understand uh, uh, this question correctly. If you are talking about the fact that the main program is the one which executes and all other functions are subsidiary, then I do not see any which way you can make other functions similar to the main program. Okay, these functions will always remain subsidiary and they will have to be invoked by someone. They can't become main programs themselves. Okay, fine. We'll close the we'll close the session today. Uh, I am aware that many of you have still more questions. As I said, please do send email to workshop support. That will ensure that I and my team gets a chance to consolidate these questions, and we remain committed to discuss and answer all these questions because that is the fundamental purpose of all thousand people coming together. Thank you so much.